Question number five for the VCA 2019 exam. And this one is worth eight marks and it's about HPLC. Um, and we've got a beautiful graph of probably standard solutions and we've got a calibration curve. Um, I'm gonna start by not looking at this, I'm gonna start by looking at the question. And what does the question actually ask me? It's over the page here, and it's here. Determine the sucrose content of the sample tested in the HPLC in grams per litre. So I need to find um, something and use the calibration curve for that. So, uh, blah, 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 we've got five mil diluted to that, 10 mils is taken diluted to that. Like a few dilutions here, which is good. A sample of this solution was injected into the HPLC column, a peak area obtained of 1900, so therefore I'm going to go across here. I'm going to go to 1900, which is sitting pretty about there. Go across to it here, and it comes down to being that. So that is what was tested into the HPLC machine, which is 0 0.30 grams per litre. So that is 0 0.30 grams per litre. And that is going to be what was directly put into the column after all these dilutions. Calculate the percentage mass by volume of sucrose in the five mil sample of soft drink. So let's go and have a look at that. Well, if I've got my concentration here, what is the dilution factor to get back to our original thing here? So um, the dilution factor was 10 mil diluted to 250 mil. So therefore this dilution factor here is gonna be times by 25 because um, this is a 25 times dilution. So therefore the concentration of the, um, in the 100 mil flask, all right, equals 0 0.30 grams per litre times by 25. So I'm gonna do that and go on and clear that and go 0.3 times 25 gives me 7.5 grams per litre. Okay, so that's that. Now, that was um, 100 mil, all right. So let's go and then, well, if it's grams per litre, what do I need to get to? I need to get to mass percentage mass to volume. So percentage mass to volume is grams per 100 mil. So, um, yeah, so therefore, that would be equal to um, 0 0.75 grams per 100 mil, and that's in the 100 mil dilution here. Alrighty, so if I want to go back again to my 5 mil, that's another times by 20 dilution I did. I did two dilutions here. I went from 5 to 100 and 10 to 250. So let's go again and say that times by 20. So divide that by 10, because that in grams per 100 mil, times that by 20, I should get 15 grams per 100 mil in my undiluted sample. I hope that's right. Anyway, that's my value for that because I can see that what um, dilutions took place. And there was a times by 25 dilution, and a times by 20 dilution, and I also need to get it down to grams per 100 mil. I played around with those values until I got a reasonable answer. All right, the can used to obtain the sample contained 3300, sorry, 330 mils of soft drink. Assuming the only sugar was sucrose, what's that? So therefore, if there's 15 grams per 100 mil, how do I get that to grams per 330 mil? Well, I'm simply gonna times that by 3.3. So that times 3.3 should give me 49.5 grams per 330 mil. There it is. Oh, good. Now, yeah, alrighty, moving on. Based on the results obtained, is the experimental val method valid? All right, so valid experiments means the same for HPLC. If it has to be valid, the same conditions must be used. So let's have a look to see if our same conditions were used. So um, here, 
Um, let's have a read through here. Standard solutions were made up using this. Each standard solution was injected. There's no reference to conditions used yet. Um, going over here, the sample of solution was injected into the column of the peak area at the same retention time under the same conditions. So we have the same retention time as what we want, again, and the same conditions were used. So yes, these are valid. Yes, it is valid as the same retention time and conditions were used. The other thing that we need to make sure is that is this value within my calibration curve? And it is as well. So that's another reason we've got a valid thing. Um, my actual um, my calibration curve can only be used from the lowest dot to the highest dot and therefore this value of 1900 is smack bang in between these two so again it's valid because of that that's great um, I'll move on to the next question which is part C that says sucrose and aspartame are types of sweeteners which we know sucrose and aspartame are part of our course Use your understanding of chemistry to explain why some people replace sugar with aspartame. Aspartame, you should know, is an artificial sweetener. Um, so therefore, it's in your data booklet in terms of the structure. And we can talk about it. We need to talk about the metallic, metabolic reactions that occur when both of these undergo um, digestion. Glycemic indexes, which is the GI, and the energy content. So let's go and talk about some of the metabolic reactions here. So um, we'll go with the first one. So sucrose, what happens with sucrose? Sucrose undergoes hydrolysis. And sucrose is also in our data booklet. So let's have a look at sucrose in our data booklet. And we should be able to see what it turns into. So here's sucrose. Here, and you should know that it turns into glucose and fructose. So undergoes hydrolysis to form um, glucose and fructose. Okay, and then um, we have to compare them. So what does aspartame do? Aspartame, this is aspartame here, which is on the next page of our data booklet, I believe. I've already um, annotated a bit. Aspartame's here. It has a um, peptide linkage, so not a peptide, it's got an amide linkage, and it's got an ester group here. So it also undergoes hydrolysis. It also undergoes hydrolysis, but does not produce glucose. In fact, it produces um, these three things, um, which I'm not gonna go into, but I'm pretty sure that they're amino acids and methanol. So therefore, I'm just gonna talk about that. It only talks about the reactions, so I'm just gonna say undergoes hydrolysis. It does not produce glucose. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. But you can find out what it actually produces. No, I'm not gonna do that. Glycemic indexes, well, um, looking at this, you can see that aspartame, because it undergoes hydrolysis, but it doesn't actually produce glucose, it doesn't have a GI index. So aspartame does not produce, I'm rewriting my thing, produce glucose. Um, therefore, will not have a GI value, thus will be much lower than sucrose, sucrose, which, which will produce glucose. All right, as GI is about, well, is about really bad use of the English language there, but let's move on, is about how quickly glucose, 
glucose is released into the body. All right, so that's what's happening there. Lastly, I need to talk about the energy content. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, it doesn't show it in your booklet, but what you should have learned over the time is that glucose and aspartame have similar energy content, but aspartame is a hundred times sweeter than glucose, thus can be used in smaller amounts. This question pretty much just is a go for it and tell me what you know about comparing um, normal sugar stuff with aspartame. Um, and that's pretty much what I've done here. I've basically just said, these are the things I've been taught about these two compounds, and I'm gonna write down what they are here. So hopefully that makes sense to you um, with that. That's it, and that's question five done. Was it five? Yeah, that was five.